Want to go outside? You know, I have a shrink of my own. <laughs> okay, <yeah>. <laughs> 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 and bitch, you need one too. <laughs> Man, how much she had a drink tonight? <laughs> Hey everyone, support our Patreon, which helps us to continue bringing you our live streams, videos, and podcasts while bringing you new content such as exclusive live streams and animated shorts. Let me start by saying, get the f- out of here with whatever you're doing in this movie, man. This movie, the woman in the window, you get the f- out of here with this. This this this, this is this, this is definitely going on one of my most ridiculous movies list of 2021. I only saw the first half of it. Okay. Well, you know what? Listen, I said get the f- here several times during this movie. And it took a while to wrap up to it, but when I did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> boy, I it was let me just say this. Uh I might seem a little angry. I'm not. It's just one of those things where it's so stupid, I just I almost had to laugh. Mm-hmm. You did not get to witness that part, I take it. Okay. I'm not you know what? It definitely has made my list of one of the silliest ass movies of the year. Maybe Amy Adams needs to just break up with Netflix between this movie right here. Look at me. You let her get away with this every time. I told you that I would do better. You always say that. You're lying. I always try. You know, I'm sure you're looking at that like, oh my God, the drama, (laughs) the pathos, the acting. No, this this is, Martin saw this. Shit was stupid. It was silly. <laughs> this it was man. They tried to do all this, all this, uh, all this dramatic acting, and it ended up being a comedy in some mm. scenes. Unintentionally funny. Unintentionally funny. Did you see some of it? Yeah, I, I watched it. It was part oh, of my yeah. worst of list. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm the one that's called. Right. I, I said I think Glenn Close gave one of the worst performances of the year, and she got a Academy Award nomination for it. You know, but between Hillbilly Elegy and now the woman in the in the window, she needs to leave. She needs to need to leave Netflix, man, because this is an abusive relationship. <laughs> oh, how ridiculous this is right here. This is a Bubbles movie. This movie, uh, The Woman. Bubbles? What's that? I'm going to tell you what a Bubbles movie okay. is. Okay. <laughs> let you know. Let you know. I know a, a bottle film, but a, a Bubbles, huh? You probably haven't heard of this. This is a new thing. It's a new thing, okay. I, it's a new thing I created. This shit is a Bubbles movie. We're talking about The Woman in the Window. About a woman who, she, she's, uh, she's agoraphobic, which means that she doesn't want to leave the house. Mm. Of course, you know, since she she can't leave the house, she's bored. She ain't got nothing to do. She watched everything on Netflix, including Hillbilly <laughs> Elegy. <probably. laughs> she's seen everything on well, there. Why did I agree to do this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she got tired of looking at porn. So she said, you know what? I'm just going to start spying on the neighbors. Right. <laughs> Pulls out the old camera with the nice lens and start looking over there. And you know what happens when you start looking at neighbors' windows. It's only a matter of time before you see a murder. Yeah, no, it's it's the the Hitchcock rule. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can't look at other people's windows unless you see a murder going on. Damn it! But you know what? Even though somebody screamed and I saw clearly somebody with a knife up in their titty and everything, nobody else nobody heard else, that shit. Nobody else heard it. Right. Nobody else saw it. Nobody else saw it. So when when you call the police, the police come to you and they say, "Oh well, shit, this bitch must be crazy." <laughs> nobody else called nine one one. Okay, so as far as the ridiculousness, I did get to that part. Okay. <laughs> that, that's right yeah. before where I had to cut it off to come over here. And I was like, this is ridiculous. Yeah. So people, uh, you can either watch this or you can just go watch Real Window if you want to. But we're talking about this right now. But Corey, what is this Bubbles movie thing? Yeah, what mm-hmm. is that? Tell you what, let's watch the trailer for, for The Woman in the Window. And I'll be back to, t- to explain exactly to you what a Bubbles movie is. You want to go outside? You know, I have a shrink of my own. And bitch, you need one too. <laughs> yeah, how much you had a drink tonight? <laughs> They're all hiding something. I told you, you will not never have my mother. Stop watching our house. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that was actually the last thing I saw. <laughs> so apparently all these people got super senses. She can hear from across the fucking street. She got supervision. No, no. That was one after all that shit had happened. The police told her that you need oh, to yeah. chill out. And she she's still looking over in their window. And they got the blinds open. I was like, you almost want her to see it. She, was, <laughs> she was waiting. That's why. Yeah. She was waiting. Yeah, exactly. It's like they set her up. It's like, yeah, we going to open these she blinds. like, you know what? I know this bitch still looking at uh -huh. us. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't, don't shut the curtains now. I see your ass. <laughs> Where you gonna go? <laughs> 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 Bitch, come out. Before I come over there. <laughs> I was in, I told this story before, but I was in uh, LA. You guys had long left. You weren't even around at the time. You weren't even born yet, I don't believe. Mm. But you know. <laughs> yeah, right, fair enough. I twinkle my dad's eye. Yeah, yeah. But we, I was in LA. And we're leaving. You know, shit always happens crazy at night. So, you know, like I just told y'all, crazy people. And now just people come up to me out of nowhere, unsolicited. No, no eye contact needed. But dude comes up to me and he's like, hey, man, you know, a lot of people don't want to know this. A lot of people don't hear me. But I'm going to tell you the truth on how Michael Jackson died. And I was like, oh, shit. All right. That's a, you know, I'm, I'm intrigued. I'm like, all right, let's hear it. And he's like, man, listen, Michael Jackson and a lot of people don't want to know the truth, man. But the thing with Michael, Michael woke up that morning. It's going to be a great day. It's going to be a great day for all of us. Michael was about to bless us with some new music. Michael was on his way to probably record, man. Michael gets, gets up, put on his clothes, puts on his, 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 his diamond glove, and, and he's about to hit downstairs. And I'm like, oh, shit. Oh, fuck, man. What happened next? And he's like, what happened next? Man, that motherfucker got to the top of the steps and Bubbles pushed his ass. People don't know. Bubbles killed Michael Jackson, and that's why I said, Get the f out of here with this. So, this is a Bubbles movie where you have my ass engrossed, you have my ass listening on the edge of my seat. I can't wait to see what happens next. And it ends up in some stupid ass area where I say, Get the fuck out of here. I spent all my time, yeah, being sucked into this shit only for it to get to the dumbest conclusion. That is my term now, people. When a movie has me for a lot of the movie really engrossed, and then you taking me to some stupid ass area, that is a bubbles moment right there. <laughs> <laughs> when you you make me feel like an idiot for sitting up here buying that shit. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, this is going somewhere. No. <laughs> no. So this is based on a book. And I thought, okay, well, that's the first thing that got me. It's based on a book. <laughs> oh, I, it I must be good. I, I've learned that that's actually a reason to not like, yeah. not give the movie a benefit of a doubt. Well, I, you know, I, I look at something that I think like, oh my God, well, you, you know, you were on the New York Times bestseller, mm -hmm. words and shit. Yeah. You, must've, <laughs> yeah. you must've, you must got something going on. Yeah, that that means it sold in airports and, and, it, and yeah. it had a cover that made people buy it when yep. when they had to wait hmm. for the and, next flight. And look, people, we keep saying. You know, that, that's why I say, listen, you know what it is. You, if you are truly in the movies, truly, truly in the movies, and I'm not talking about going back to when we say classics, you know, we're not, we're not talking about shit from the 2000s. You know, we're not talking no. about. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, Fight Club, man. That's a whole but a good. You know? I mean, it's considered retro yeah. now, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, if, you, if, if your classics don't go past 1999, if The Matrix is like the, the epitome of Hollywood, you might not know this, but we're talking about if you're a true cinephile, you know Hitchcock is the shit. He's been watching the people across the way. He knows a lot about them by now. Too much, perhaps. <laughs> this nosy motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Everything this... that happens to him is what he gets. <laughs> yep. And they really do. They don't tell you about the murder and thing. It's Jimmy Stewart in Hitchcock's classic, Rear Window. He plays a guy. Now tell me if this doesn't sound like what we just saw. Instead of being an agoraphobic, this is a guy who broke his leg. But he's a photographer. He was at some racing track and car ran into his ass or something, but then he doesn't have anything to do at home but pick up his camera and just look at other people. There's no internet back then. No internet back then. See, Amy Adams had the internet, so she should, <laughs> she should mind her own goddamn business. She had options. She, she yeah. had options, yeah. she yeah. Went, Jimmy Stewart didn't have shit to do. She had internet, she had Netflix, she, she had HBO Max. She's sitting up here looking at the neighbors. But that is that, that movie's a classic. That's where he sees a, a murder from across the street. Now, that formula has been done a lot. And I don't know, maybe it was done before him. there on the second floor, the woman pacing about. These are the newlyweds on a honeymoon no one will ever forget. 
And he jacks off to it all. (laughs) (laughs) But I ain't got nobody. (laughs) Who's looking at me? (laughs) Yeah, man. It's... uh, this is uh, that trailer is so funny because they don't tell you about anything about the murder. It's just they're just pretty much saying and he's a nosy motherfucker. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And but it, I don't know if there was a formula for that before Hitchcock got into it, but he did make the most popular version of mm-hmm. it. And so if you're going to do that, man, because they actually in the movie, when they open the film up before they start their movie, they're showing you oh, rear window Mid-time. right here. Jesus. They're showing you. Yeah, they're showing you Alfred Hitchcock's movie. Wow. Yeah. That, that's a, that, like seriously, before you see any of the actors, before we get, we, we're barely into the titles, and on TV you're looking at Jimmy Stewart's face right here. They're showing you the end of the movie, by the way. Well, it's just a way for them to say, "Look, before you get on us for ripping yeah. off Rear Window, we know, we know." <laughs> yeah, it's, or it's it's homage. How about that? Does that cover it? Oh, uh, here's a piece of advice. Uh, how about? When you start your movie, don't start your movie with a better movie hmm. than yours. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Especially when it's a pale imitation crab version of Hitchcock. Hitchcock, I'm going to tell y'all, man, whether it's deserved or not, uh, maybe it's because of just the status that he has. That he has. But you ain't going to beat Hitchcock. If you re- if you remaking a Hitchcock movie, I don't give a fuck how great of a... Of a, of a filmmaker you are, I tell you right now, if Christopher Nolan tried to go out and do a Hitchcock movie, even his biggest fans would say, fuck you. You better stop this now. You cannot recreate Hitchcock. Yeah. Be- just because of the history behind right, it. Right, right. So, but if you are going to try, you better do a you, damn good job you, you, at that. You better bring it. You better not do no half-assed job at that, man. And yet... <laughs> And they start the movie reminding you that a much superior version is out there. That you just forfeited the game. But the movie is actually a combo of two things. So it is, it's, it's, it is real window, but it also has a good dash of this movie right here. I will practice believing my husband loves me, but I could be wrong. I moved over to turn down a knob, and I saw that shadow go. Over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, huh? <laughs> Have you seen that guy in the glasses before? Amy is the kind of girl who attracts admirers. Whoever took her is bound to bring her back. That's Gone Girl. So this is a, it's, it's half rear window, very much wanting to be in the direction of Hitchcock, but also narratively some of Gone Girl here too. I was looking at how they were combining both those elements right there. And of course, I'm, you know, I'm that snob. I was like, how dare you try to <laughs> compete with the master? He would not be pleased with you. <laughs> but I start looking at this and I start thinking, well, shit, man. You know, the, the cast actually is really good here. Amazing cast. It's an amazing. They already got some big hitters. You don't see him in the trailer because he pretty much phoned his performance in <laughs> Anthony Mackie. Oh, is yeah. In this. oh, yeah. Yeah. No, she, she got both Captain Americas in here. Oh, yeah. wow. All, wow. They, all they needed was Chris Evans to have a, huh. <laughs> yeah. a, a triple. Anthony Mackie and, and Amy Adams in here. And Anthony Mackie's only here for a second. Most of the time, he really did call from his apartment and do his performance. Mm-hmm. But Amy Adams is in here. Anthony Mackie. <laughs> and then Wyatt Russell comes. I'm like, it is, there are a lot of oh shit moments in a good way here. Oh shit, Anthony Mackie. Oh shit, Amy Adams. Oh shit, Wyatt Russell's in here. I guess Falcon called in a favor to <laughs> say, hey man, <laughs> we're getting along now. I got a job for you. Uh, Gary Oldman. Oh shit. Paperboy! Oh yeah. shit! <laughs> Julianne Moore. Julie, J- Julianne, you saw Julianne Moore, her crazy ass. There's Gary Oldman. By the way, Gary Oldman even looks like the villain from Rear Window. If he put glasses on, he'd be the same. Raymond oh, Burr with yeah, that white yeah, hair. Yeah. You know, Jennifer Jason Lee. So there's a I man, there's a lot of people in here, and I'm thinking, well, it makes you think, well, uh, they're about to pull this off. You know, they they got something good to give these people out here. They know what they're doing. And it's all very good, man. Though I, I did not like one of the characters. There was one character that I did not like, and I'll see if I can stop here because they had no clips. Because I don't, you know, I, I'll just say for reasons. But uh, there is one character here, and I, Martin, you saw this. Can you tell me what you think about this character? Let me see if I can find him here. So there was th- this 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 one character that I'm talking about. I did not like because I felt like. That with this particular person, it was the autistic neighbor. 
Did you get that? The, the kid? The kid. Yeah, did you get did you get a feeling that the kid was autistic? Uh, I got that. You know what? Now I think about it, because I was like, this kid's kind of off a little bit. Mm. And I was waiting for them to reveal what it was. But now that you say it, yeah, autism would have would fit that. There was something going on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he had some kind of condition. Yeah, like he, he, he <clears throat> something about him wasn't quite socialized. Yeah. And I didn't like that because I thought, well, you know, it seemed like they're using autism for a setup for you know, and by the way, it's Hollywood autism. You know, he, like, he ain't beating his head or nothing like that. He ain't like that movie music where he's so like, So is, is he insane or is he, does he have a superpower? No, no, no. no. He's, 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 he just seems to not really know standard boundaries. Okay. Fair it's enough. slight Hollywood mentally challenged. Hi, you my friend, you know. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's like, all right. But you know, I said, okay, so they better use this character for a good reason. Otherwise, there's no real reason for I, it. I just okay. figured him being in here like this, he's... Not necessarily a ringer, but he's something that's going to pop up later. It's going to throw you off. Like yeah. he, he might not be all he appears to be. Mm. Anybody know this actor's name? Because I do like the actor. Nothing against any of these actors. All these actors are great, man. All these actors are great, and I liked all their characters. He's the only character that I didn't like because, man, that's that's some Hollywood shit. Now y'all know me. I'm not, man. I ain't one of these people who's out there always uh, trying to, to 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 rally against Hollywood for the slightest portrayal of a condition mentally challenged people ever i have no problem with that at all i still love forrest gump so if I, you know I, I i have no problem with it but now they use they use uh the mentally challenged and they especially use autism as a plot device yeah, yeah. that for a movie that re do you really really positively absolutely need it and it just and i said we'll see if you do awesome if not that's kind of some bullshit so that character i did not like so much uh Fred Hedging, Hedginger is his name. Like him. I thought he was really good. Uh, I tell you, the movie, I'm going to pass this on to you. I'm going to say some good things, man. I thought this movie was well shot. It almost like they knew that, all right, <clears throat> we got two great movies hanging over our head. Of course, we got Hitchcock. So, look, we got to go out there and pull out all the stops, man. We can't be bullshitting with this. So, the movie shot very well, man. They play with, uh, they, they do a lot of uh, mood lighting. That's very well, playing with the space of the brownstone. Uh, I I really liked a lot of the filmmaking in here, which is what was pulling me in, which is what was making me think, along with the cast that's doing an excellent job, making me think, man, you got something here. Listen, I was forgiven a lot of things here, like I said, because they, they were, when I say trying too hard, like they throwing, they, they're making the characters too crazy so yeah. that, to make you say, who done it? Hmm. Who who's responsible for the death? You like this whole thing with with uh, uh, Julian Moore in here. Claws eyes. skull face. Well, it like everybody who came over to her apartment, knowing she's agoraphobic, everyone was in her face. Everyone was either angry. Yeah. Everyone was either an asshole or they were crazy. Yeah. And it's just like, man, okay, you're trying too hard to make me figure out who who's responsible because no one's normal. Uh -huh. All right, cool. Even like I said, even the autistic kid over there. Yeah. But you know what? Like I said, man, I was enjoying this. It's almost, I was enjoying it almost like in a pulpy kind of way. Sure. But and that and, and that's when you could tell that the movie because it's, it's going good for a while. And that's when you can tell the movie when it starts feeling itself. The movie just kind of like, oh shit, you liking this? Cool. Let me put these wax wings on right here, <laughs> man. You know what? And, and and let me now, let me hit you with you liking what you see here. You really enjoying it? Awesome, man. Let me hit you with them twists. And it's like, oh shit, here we go. Yeah, y'all had to pull out the twist. We were already kind of twisting in a way, and I was letting it go. But now you pulling out this M Night Shyamalan shit. Even M Night Shyamalan be like, "God damn it, hold up for a minute now. <laughs> Wait a minute. Even that's too crazy for me. And I've done some crazy ass twists. I done broke my back doing this shit." Did <laughs> They pulled those twists out, and that's when I had my bubbles moment with this man. This shit here came back to bubbles. Came, uh, yeah, <laughs> bubbles pushed this movie down. <laughs> yeah, man, it's this man. This this case. This was twisting so bad, and in so many just irrational, just ridiculous ways, man. They were trying to write. They were trying to write a classic deep mystery. And they were trying to do it all these twists, and they end up making a balloon animal instead. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck is this? Oh, well, <laughs> 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 
Who did it? I don't know, but this is a giraffe. Yeah. <laughs> man, fuck. <laughs> you clown. No, nah, man. The movie starts to get, it's, it gets so crazy. Like a drug field dance at a nightclub. This thing gets insane, man. It starts pulling out all, it's not just that they are twist, Martin. You hear what I'm saying, Chris? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I could deal with twist, man. But now, God damn you, M. Night Shyamalan, we've done so many twists in Hollywood, uh -huh. you now have twisted our cliche. Yeah. We have twists that, that you've seen so many times now that, look, if you had done this 20 years ago, we'd be like, oh, but today it's like, man, get the fuck. We've seen this so many times. Are you, yo, you pulling this? This is something. Um, wow, people, I can't remember. I, they, they, they got these people. They got this A-list cast right here to be in a lifetime ripoff of Gone Girl. Oh. It makes no, you thought what you saw, because I, I let that go. I was like, all right. That's a convention of these rear window movies. Everybody leaves their leaves their windows open. Mm -hmm. It's stupid. Yeah. I even let them have the nine one one call. They're, they they call nine one one in the movie. Uh, 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 Amy Adams' character calls nine one one, and the nine one one operator does some shit. This is Hollywood nine one one. Ma'am, stop screaming, ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. You say somebody's dead. Somebody was was killed by their by by, by their husband or by by their by their, by their roommate. Ma'am, are you sure you didn't do it? Oh, it's, I know. Oh, like, oh, what? I didn't ask that question. Is this what we're writing now? So, this, yeah. This, this is what we got to do? Ma'am, are you sure you're not? That the fucking operator actually asked Amy Adams, Ma'am, are you sure you're not the killer? Am I calling 911 a fucking detective? Would you, Batman? <laughs> they would be promptly fired for that. They would be fired for that. Yeah. And they... And, and, and if you, just in case you want to know, no, no one ever goes to the house. Jeez. Yeah, yeah. Wow. She, she's on a landline and they're like, what's your address? She tells him, <laughs> wait, is it this one or this one? It's like, you're already tracing the call. You already know exactly where it's coming from. Hmm. And she's panicked. She's like, ma'am, somebody's dying over there. Please get somebody over. Address, ma'am. Ma'am, I'm telling you, ma'am. Stop screaming, ma'am. Ma'am, please help me. Bitch, are you sure you didn't do this? Cause you sound crazy. <laughs> yeah. like, Good man. See that? See that's where it was turning me off. Cause I was like, this is manufactured tension. Mm. Cause even when she sees this murder and she's there with her her camera, somehow she can't take the photo. Uh. <laughs> yeah. she's, she's dropping it cause she's so panicky, oh. and yeah. then she's got to make this this panic call. Every, yeah. every cliche. <laughs> every Maybe she didn't have any film in the camera. You know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, I'm, I'm just saying the lens, lens cap was on. Yeah. Lens cap was on. Oh no. <laughs> It goes so crazy. This is how lazy it is. It's so lazy with these twists, these cliche twists that we see. They start taking, they start taking elements from other genres, like the killer that teleports. Yeah, that's <laughs> Jason Voorhees. Somebody, yeah. <laughs> the killer stabs like a, I forgot what it was. It was like a chair or something, or some uh, some some paper wall or something. The killer stabs it in. Within a millisecond, Julian Moore pulls it aside, and that bitch is gone. He ain't nowhere to be seen. Okay. Mm. Yeah, out. Yeah, just, just, I mean, a second. Like, he didn't run that fast, you know? <laughs> That's some poof shit right there. The, she, there's moments where you slip it on blood when the killer's chasing you. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Classic. And it keeps telegraphing the, 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 the villain's death. The killer's death. They keep telegraphing that shit to the point, man, leave me something. That's why I almost don't mind spoiling it for you. I was like, leave me something, because the movie keeps pointing. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> keep uh, looking at that. Wait, oh, wait till you see. You know. Yeah. No, the, no, the minute early on when they pointed it out, like, it's like, oh, hey, yeah, yeah, this thing needs to be replaced. I'm uh, like, ah. Uh. The movie keeps saying, see that? <laughs> see that? <laughs> huh? <laughs> you remember that now? <laughs> I, I think a lot of times that happens because it's that not there, and they show it to a test audience that comes out going, "Well, we didn't understand how that where'd that come from." Ah, uh, you're like it, it, you dumb motherfuckers! <laughs> all right, we gotta we gotta put this all over it so nobody is confused. Oh, oh, damn you, movie! Damn you! I was giving you a chance. We had something. We were good. Why'd you do this? The biggest twist, get the fuck out of here with this. The biggest twist in here really is kind of offensive. And it confirmed exactly one thing I was saying. And I said, you know what? And you made me feel like I was the asshole. <laughs> no. I'll tell you, they do something cool in here. They fuck Amy Adams' face up. Oh, oh shit. 
I think she'll be all right, but they, they do something. <laughs> oh, they do something. Oh, no. I, I was like, wow, well, at least you went there. Interesting. Yeah, the killer got tired of her shit. <laughs> oh wow. Okay. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. It was. It was something with a with a with a, uh, a hand rake. Yeah. Ooh. I was like, oh Jesus. Yeah. I was like, oh, damn. damn. I was like, all right. That's you know body what? horror right there. Yo, yeah, man. Yeah. I was like, okay, we getting some horror movie shit here. All right. Interesting. Uh, all right. Hmm. That was actually pretty cool. Wow. Okay. To the point, I was like, I don't know if old Amy gonna make it. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Fuck her face up, man. Mm. Folks. Hmm. If you're going to take from the master, you already have to kind of be bringing your game. You already can't be slipping up. You can't be even making small mistakes. If you're going to go in and, and you know, what you want to say is homage to Rear Window, then you better go in there and pay proper respect by doing the best damn writing that you can before that even goes to the screen, before you even shoot one frame of film. And this didn't do that. It's, 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 it's like I said, it's doing well in the beginning, and at some moment, it felt like the movie just wanted to stop. Just like, let's get it over with. Let's just get it done. It's almost like the movie said, "Man, doing Hitchcock is hard." <laughs> <laughs> Man, I don't want. I don't want to do this no more. <laughs> let's do Friday the Thirteenth instead. <laughs> so it's just pretty schlock. That's what it is. It it's is good looking schlock. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. fair enough. Not to be unfair here, because I don't know what this book is like. This book might be amazing. You know, I so I don't want to make the book sound bad or look bad, but. Yeah, this when it hit when it hits that moment, the movie when it hits that. You're right. When it hits that Gone Girl imitation moment, it's terrible. I'm only giving the movie a low rental because of the good filmmaking that I thought, the imagination that went into it. There was some effort. There was, and the actors. And I don't want to go in and take away from the actors, man. They were doing it's, it's a it's a great cast that's doing a lot with this, man. They're doing the absolute best that they can with this script, and this script is working for a little while, but that ending. That third act is some complete bullshit. And I'll tell you why if you want to know. If you want to know the the <laughs> if you want to know the 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 spoiler here, the ending of it, let me know. If not, I will I'll move on. You can watch for yourself. I like I'm, to know. I'm dying to know. Yeah. What happens is, because I was trying to save this for you, what happens is, is that you saw this in the trailer. Julian Moore is led to you're being led to believe that he that she is the wife of Gary Oldman, the guy across the street. And we all assuming that Gary Oldman is the killer. Of course, Jason, Jennifer Jason Lee's character comes in and she has this. She says that she's married to Gary Oldman. Hmm. So who is this person that 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 uh, Amy Adams saw every because she's on medication. Everybody thinks that she's hallucinating. Everybody thinks she's crazy, but she insists that she talked to somebody and that woman that she talked to is dead. And so we're led to believe that yeah. Gary yeah. Oldman. She's Jane Russell. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Jane Russell's a name. We're, we're led to believe that Gary Oldman killed Julian Moore. Right. Because, well, first of all, he looks like the villain from Weird Window and he's got, <laughs> or he just has crazy white hair. It's Gary Oldman. It's Gary Oldman's in your movie. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, and then you also led to believe that, well, wait a minute, shit, maybe, uh, why Why Russell starts, he starts having anger management issues and creepy. oh shit, he's on parole too, yeah. so he already got some, <laughs> he already got some criminal history behind him. Uh, yeah, he, he had red herring written all over. Him. Yeah, so you start to think like, well, maybe he did it because now you're thinking, you start hearing noises downstairs and you hear a woman's voice and you start thinking like, well, maybe he was having an affair with her and maybe he killed her. And also with Gary Oldman, you see him beating his son. Mm. You know, they're making all these people, you know, real. they're making them real dickheads, man. Uh, so what it all comes down to, listen, I'm saying all this because what it all comes down to is that, yes, Amy Adams, and here comes the first twist cliche that I that not, I kind of let it go, but I said, I'm, I'm, I'm checking out now. This shit is overdone. So it turns out that Amy Adams, the whole time she's talking to her family, she's looking at pictures uh, of her daughter, videos of her daughter and why she's doing that. She's talking to Anthony Mackie, her husband, and he's always on the phone, always on the phone. They're separated. He's not coming back home. You know, we don't know what's going to happen in the relationship. When they get to the house, one of the police, they tell her, ma'am, you know why we don't believe you? Your family has been dead Ugh. for over a year. Oh my God. You, you, oh my you've been Lord. talking to nobody. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and I'm like, fuck you, man. All right, now look. Yeah. Look, I, I, I don't like this. 
I'll mm. let it slide. Yeah, there's moments in here. <laughs> okay. Because she, yeah, because she starts looking around the apartment. Yeah. She's like, oh shit, that's right. I keep seeing a car crash in my living room. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot about that. Turns out that, <laughs> turns out that she, she, oh, and why are they dead? Because they were having an argument. Uh-huh. Why were they having an argument? Because she was cheating. And oh, they decided damn. to have this argument on the road. They even died in the most fucking cliched way. Because mm-hmm. the, 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 phone, the phone rings while while oh. uh, while they're on there. He's like, you going to get that? He's like, I bet it's him, ain't it? And she's <laughs> like, yeah, I'm not going to answer. And I'll fucking answer. And the phone gets knocked out of the hand. She reaches around to grab it. Oh, no. While oh, driving? He didn't stop her on her way back. Oh. He sat there the whole time and waited for her. Like, <laughs> reaching the back seat to grab that shit. And then when they finally start going off the cliff, he's like, baby, look out! <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Yeah, and they crash. So it turns okay. out she's been talking. Oh, well, she must be crazy. Do these people really exist? Here's where the shit gets real stupid. So the <laughs> so that kid that I was telling you about. Oh, let's go back to the autistic kid. <laughs> this is where, yeah. Because I said, well, I said earlier, I said, man, I don't I don't mind Hollywood throwing mentally challenged and aut- aut- autistic kids in movies as long as you do something with it that's not insulting. Because so, insulting is... And and and, and uh, uh, coming in and being uh, uh, not only disrespectful but also being just offensive, as if, as if you exploitive, as if you use that for some some cheap narrative trick, and that's mm-hmm. what they did. Mm. This so at the beginning of the movie, the neighbor, the neighbor kid, you see him being abused by Gary Oldman and everything, and he's always coming over and he's like, "Hi, can we be friends?" My I, father, you should, you know, he's just having a hard time. You don't understand. He needs to blow off steam. Can we be friends? You know, and she's yeah. like, come over and talk to me anytime. Right. Martin, let me tell you what happens. Because she's a child psychologist. She's a child psychologist. Mm. Let me tell you what happens here. So she finally figures out that I'm not crazy. As there's a reflection of Julian Moore in the glass right here, I got to tell everybody what's going on. Let me call the cops again. All of a sudden, Wyatt Russell comes in. He's like, what you doing? And uh, and she's like, oh, you got to believe me. I'm not crazy. Like, I ain't believing shit. You see him disappear. And he's like, oh, is he going to get a knife or something? You hear that fool clang, 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 clang. Who comes around the corner with a hoodie and a bloody knife? Mr. Autism here. What? <laughs> Except this time, with no explanation, he's like, hey, baby, what's going on? And he's like, yeah, I'm the killer. I'm the, I've been guilty the whole time. You know, my mom, uh, you know, oh, yeah. No, oh, whoa, no, what it was. Oh, yeah, he killed his, he, yeah, he was the one that killed his mom. He killed his mom, and then he killed Wyatt, Wyatt Russell because he was like, they had an affair going on, and he should have treated her so bad. So who was his actual mom, Jennifer Jason Lee or, or? Julian Moore. Or Julian Moore. So Gary Oldman was lying? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, to, to protect his son. Is that what's yeah. going on? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. okay. That is exploitive, then. Yeah, he comes to show, show that the, the the possibly autistic character he's he's crazy he's murdering everybody. Oh, because he wasn't pretending to be autistic. He actually was, but he's also a killer. Mm. He no, he was pretending to be autistic. Oh, because he oh. Comes, <laughs> yeah, he comes around. Okay. He's like <laughs> right. he's like, yeah, you know the thing about being at camp and you know every they teach you how to kill people at and, camp. you know and. Yeah, you know, if that guy had just been nice to to my mom, she wouldn't have to have been around. She would have just left. But no, nah, she had to keep coming around. But, you know, no one's going to know that what I did because they think that you're the crazy one. And he that <laughs> autism is gone. Okay. Oh, okay. That autism. Yeah. The whole. Yeah. Before he's like, I, hi, hi. Now he's now he's Mr. Charismatic leaning on shit. <laughs> yeah, it was me the whole time. Uh huh. What you think about that? And I was like, get the fuck out of here with that schemer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I said, oh, yeah. He was. At, I don't. They don't explain why, but he was acting autistic for some reason. Okay. All that shit. Or maybe he's not, but he he certainly wasn't acting the same way before. Okay. The they, the, the thing that they kept showing. He dies by crashing through that. Oh, of course. Yeah, figure. Of they course. kept showing yeah, that no. over and over and over again. No, early on, when right, Wyatt Russell points to it and somebody's up there yeah. stepping on it, it feels like it's going to crack uh, in. And I'm like, all right, this is the skyline going to be yeah. what kills the killer. Yeah, right, yeah right. because they are, just for no reason, hey, you got mold on your skylight, 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 <laughs> skylight. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah, and it would have been better if they had bubbles come out. At the end, <laughs> that would have been a surprise. If, if Bubbles had come out and pushed Amy Adams down the steps, or he had been the murderer and pushed uh, uh, Julian Moore down the steps, 
that would have been amazing. Would've Chimpanzees been, are aggressive. Yeah, it would have been. Yeah, it would have made more sense than what they're doing right here. Nice. Completely idiotic and completely offensive. The fuck out of here with that, man. Now y'all see why I kept saying, "Get the fuck out of here." <laughs> Christopher Ayers says, "So you guys were talking about how terrible women, a uh, woman in the window was. We don't need more." It was supposed to be released in 2019 by 20th Century Fox. I knew something was happening because they had the 20th Century Fox logo, or 20th Century, before then. And I guess that's pre-mouse. Oh, it tested so horribly, they brought in Tony Gilroy. Damn, so I thought I was being the, the, I thought I was being the villain here. So apparently other people saw how stupid this was. They said it tested so poorly that they had to bring in Tony Gilroy, who wrote most of the Bourne movies and came in to work a rework Rogue One to rewrite the entire third act. <laughs> well, he made it worse. No, no. <laughs> and then COVID hit and it got sold to Netflix. Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross were also going to do the score, but left to do Soul instead. So Danny Elfman came in to take over. Oh, uh, well, I guess we know who came out on top on that. Ooh. Danny Elfman's like, bitch, I still got paid. <laughs> 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 I came on top too.